the Amoka sailing yacht. 18 meters of cutting edge ocean racing machine. Fast, powerful, and always pushing the limits of design. Whether they're cutting along the coast or lapping the planet through the vast oceans, at each boat's heart are the sailors, using only the wind and waves, their muscles and skill, pushing the boat and themselves to the limit. But how do these extreme machines fly across an ocean? Since 1991, the Amoka class has been a test bed for bold ideas, with no two boats looking the same. Each boat must fit certain design parameters or a box rule. However, there's plenty of freedom for innovation, experimentation and very different approaches. For the seven teams in the Ocean Race Europe in 2025, one idea unites them all. Flying is faster than smashing through the waves. That's why every boat is fitted with long curved arms reaching down into the sea, hydrofoils. These foils act like wings, bending the flow of the water with a pressure difference, lifting the boat above the surface, reducing drag and unleashing speed. When the first foils were added, they weren't really built to fly. These were stabilizers, counteracting the massive power generated by the sails, pushing the hull upright so sailors could press harder and go faster. But over time, the question shifted. Could we lift the boat completely clear? Could we fly? The answer, in theory, was yes. But out on the open ocean, flying is anything but simple. You can't get through a leg with like this. The wind and waves change constantly, meaning the sailors must adapt to keep the boat on the foils and avoid crashing into the waves, which loses speed and risks breakages and injuries to the crew. So the challenge is to find that balance between performance and stability. And foil designs are still evolving every year, setting new speed and distance records and pushing the limits of what the sailors can endure. Here are five key foil factors. Size and shape are where you start. Thicker foils with a heavy curve bend the water flow aggressively, generating lots of power. But in light winds, the foil can be too thick to slide smoothly through the water, making the boat slow as the foil drags their feet. A flatter shape designed to disturb the water as little as possible is quick in the light winds, but would struggle to lift eight tons of boat and crew when you need it to. Developing the perfect foil curve takes time. It's nearly a year to design and build a pair, so making the right decision is key. The next two power factors are mostly out of your hands. Water density, which changes with temperature and salinity. Cold, salty water giving a little more lifting power and boat speed, which varies with the wind. Go too slow and the foil can't lift the boat. Too fast and suddenly the foil becomes powerful enough to eject you from the water. And then there's the fifth factor, the foil's angle of attack. This is where the sailors earn their keep. Using hydraulics, trimming the pitch of the boat, they fine tune the angle, adjusting lift, hunting for that perfect sweet spot. These boats are always on the edge and sailors who race these boats have the scars to show for it. Helmet, body armor, and crash padding feature across the fleet. It's a balancing act, second by second, meter by meter, a combination of sailing skill, intense concentration, and experimental technology, right on the line between speed and disaster. But when those foils do their job, when the sailors manage to just balance the power, they're flying. <laughs>